to another live broadcast of Better Life Lessons. I'm Dr. Stephen L. Pettis. And I'm Pastor Laura Pettis. Well, we just thank and praise God as always. Uh, those of you who are viewing by way of webcast, God bless you. Uh, if this is your first time watching us, uh, praise you to the Lord. Uh, we are the ministry that, in fact, teaches you a better way of living. Because I learned years ago, when you uh, learn better, you will live better. Amen. And those Amen. of you, if you desire prayer at this time, you can give us a call as the phone number appears across the screen. As always, we have some faith-filled, spirit-filled uh, prayer warriors just waiting to touch and agree for your breakthrough and for your miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. As always, let's welcome this national and international audience. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, Pastor Lord, it's good to see you again. Uh, we'll let the audience know you're going to be with me the next uh, few weeks. Amen. So we're going to be teaming up on a couple series. We're leading on into Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And then the month of April, we're going to talk on some things on uh, uh, Passover and all of that. So it's going to be a fun, fun, fun next few weeks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, on tonight, and uh, as I said, the next couple of weeks, we're going to deal with servanthood. Amen. So if we would give this a title, we call it the heart of a servant. I think I taught on this a few years back. So we're going to deal with servanthood. And uh, the Lord would lead me this way because, as I said, in just a couple of weeks, the body of Christ, we're going to be celebrating uh, Resurrection Sunday, Amen. which to the world is Easter Sunday. But Easter Sunday is not only uh, the foundation of Christianity or the finished work that we know of our redemption, but it's also an important lesson that deals with servanthood. And what I mean by that, in all that Christ did for us, it was as a result of him being a servant. You know, when we lead up to, 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 to Easter and all that, everything that Christ did throughout, throughout his three and a half year ministry here, it leads to a servant. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to give you a few foundation scriptures. Let's start with Matthew. Let's go to the 20th chapter of Matthew. The 20th chapter of Matthew, verse, uh, let's look at verse 27. 20th chapter of Matthew, verse 27. And it says, And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Wow, that, that's a mouthful right there. In other words, who's who, who going to be the head, who's going to be the boss, let him be the servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Pastor, let me read that in my Bible. Well, I got, I got a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got a New okay. King James Version? Okay, I'm going to read New King okay. James Version, and I'm going to read Amplified Bible. Mm -hmm. New King James Version says, And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Mm -hmm. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give him his life a ransom for many. Now, in the same, uh, those same passages in the Amplified Bible, it says it like this. And whoever desires to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be waited on, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, the price paid to set them free. Now, we're going to kind of deal with that, but let me give you another scripture and then we'll kind of talk about it. Let, let's go to Philippians. Now, keep, keep this in mind. Uh, Jesus came not to uh, be served, but to serve. Mm hmm Philippians, the second chapter, and let's look at verse 5. Second chapter of Philippians, verse 5 says, now let's keep in mind what we just read in Matthew 20. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. Now, let me first kind of give you some definitions. What does it mean to serve? Serve means to attend to another, devoted to the service of another. 
Say that again. To attend to another or devoted to the service of another. So now when we're talking about servicing or service, serving is about your commitment to something or someone else. When we're talking about service, it's about your commitment to something or someone else. Now keep in mind what, what we read in that Matthew 20. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. Mm -hmm. So we could also say Jesus didn't come for your commitment to him, but he came to be committed to you. Amen. Hmm. Now, did he prove that? Absolutely. When he gave his life. Now, if nothing else, if Jesus is the perfect example of Jesus exemplifies servanthood and a Christian is Christ-like, or like Christ, then we're also to put on the mind of Christ, and we should be like a like-minded servant. Amen. Hmm. Now, you can make note of this or write this down. The manifested work of every born-again believer is to serve. The manifested work for every born-again believer is to serve. In other words, your service is going to affect your Christian walk. Amen. Hmm. Now, this is important to, to understand because, and, and I say that because we're, we're really living in a generation of, and this has been going on for some years, in a generation of entitlement. Mm -hmm. You know, where people think what's old to them. Amen. Amen. You know. Uh, Pastor, mm -hmm. the thing about, about servanthood, um, is one of the things that open the door is your outside, is your outside appearance for us to know that you heard from God. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody don't understand that, but it's one of the evidence of an outside form. In other words, when, I, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm serving, and I'm serving under the man of God or the church or in the capacity of serving, I'm letting everybody know that I, can, I am capable of hearing from God because when you when you don't when you don't want to serve then you can't tell me you heard from God mm -hmm. because hearing from God is under the fellowship of service Absolutely. and so when people just think that well I ain't got to go through that I ain't got to go through a man I heard from God for myself well this is your indicator mm -hmm. that you're not serving God sure this is you know um, it, it carries the weight of now I know that you are obedient mm -hmm. To the word of God. See, it's so bigger than just serving in the church and being in the choir mm -hmm. and, and being in a, on a nurse's board and being that. See, it does, it, it, it does not matter because we cannot, we cannot know what your motive is mm -hmm. with serving under the capacity of a department. Sure. But we, can, but, we can, but we can know what your motive is when it comes to the things of God. Sure. You know, these are duties. I think the difference between duties and service to God is two different two things, different. and people don't understand that. Now, you that. say that, and that's true, because people, and I've seen this happen over years, where people would confuse church, church work. Anybody can do church work. You don't even have to know how to spell Jesus to do church work. And people get confused with that, with church work and your service to the Lord. I had wrote this down, uh, kind of in lines of what you're saying. The groundwork of your Christianity is to serve. You can't love the Lord and not want to serve. Mm -hmm. You know. So there is a significant difference in, in doing church work and serve. Because church work is just here. That's it. Now, this is important because this is part of, of when you belong to, to the local church and you do all that you can do to build up that church and part of the the of the, the vision of that particular local church and all of that. But, but uh, uh, outside of that, we still serve. And, and, and also the thing about being a servant, it, it, when, when, it's, when, it's in, when it's embedded inside you to be a servant, you cannot walk around, Pastor, mm -hmm. and see the need of the church mm -hmm. and ignore and the ignore need, the need of the church. Absolutely. It's some, it, you know, this is your capacity to see, am I really a servant? Mm -hmm. Because how could you see the need of a church mm -hmm. And then and still walk away and say, well, nobody ain't said nothing to me about church. Well, that only is a manifestation. Well, maybe we'll get into it. That's a manifestation. Your heart is not there. It's just like there's no way in the world my heart can be with you if you have a need and I just ignore it. My heart is not with her. 
if she has a need and I just ignore it. Because the thing about a need is we see the need. Mm -hmm. You see the need. Mm -hmm. But then when you ignore the need, then you cannot tell me that you are faithful to me. Right. And I have to tell you mm -hmm. that I need you to pick me up when I fell mm -hmm. falling down or, or I have to tell you like, but if you've never said that, I won't know. Well, some things you don't have to say. If you see it. Yeah. If you can see it. Yeah. Some things is pretty much in your face, mm -hmm. you know, but, 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 but we walk around and say, well, if nobody said anything to me that I can't, I'm not going to do nothing because see under the umbrella of servantship is creativity. Mm -hmm. And when you are uncreative, then that says something about you not a good servant. Mm -hmm. Because under the umbrella of serving, mm -hmm. you be uh, you'll be creative. Sure. Which means that you would think of ways, ways to do to, the things of God. See, it's a, see, it opens so many different doors that everybody don't understand and say, well, I am. But no, no, no. Because uh, be, being creative means that I am thinking of other ways, and God has opened the door for me to think of other ways to do it. This is why I always say, Pastor, it's more than one way to skin a mm -hmm. cat. Not, no offense to the cat love. No, no offense <laughs> to the cat love. But it's more than one way to do things. Sure. In other words, I, you know, God will give you a, 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 a witness of a plan mm -hmm. and a, a direction to show you this is another way to do things. We got to stop putting God in this box mm -hmm. and saying that, oh, God, you don't do it one way. No, that's not true. There's several ways of doing things. It's a point of get the job done. Yeah. See, when you have a willing heart to serve, and you're right, God will show you how to do something. Sometimes people uh, get a, well, somewhat amazed at, the creativity between you and I, especially if we didn't go to school for a lot of things. And it has nothing to do with we just what it, it's a servant's heart mm -hmm. that has caused us to be able to do things that we didn't go to school for. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have a, a servant's heart. Mm -hmm. See, when you have a servant, see, in other words, when, if, if I have a servant's heart, I'm just using an example of, of the house of God or whatever. Now, I ain't been to school for carpentry or none of that. But when you have a servant's heart like that, God will give you a grace. He'll give you an idea on how to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the same. We'll take it back to, 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 to marriage. Now, your heart was in the marriage and making things easy for me. And then when we went through that period years ago, and I didn't have no money in the washing machine. Was it a washing machine or dryer? One of them. It broke down. make a difference. And it ain't, I, it, it, it's not that I was negligent. I just didn't have the money to buy another one. But because her heart was in that, you know, and God gave her a, a, an idea, however you want to put it, turn that joke over and what? Put the belt on it. Put the belt on it. And turn it back it. over. And by the time a man came back, it was It was whack working. But the thing about it, it, it gives you creativity because it's more than one way to do things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you are looking at like, well, I'm not skillful in this. And that might be true. Right. And see, this is where the, it opened the door for favor to come over your life. See, serving God is opening the door, putting yourself in position to allow favor to come yeah. in. Now, favor and blessing is two different things because favor is another level than blessing because we all are on the umbrella of blessing. Mm -hmm. You wake up in the morning, you bless. You, you eat your food, you bless. Mm -hmm. You are thinking you are blessed. But see, favor is another level that no man can give to you and no man can give credit for you. Yeah. That's the difference between bless. Bless is that, oh, you bless for, with some money. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God for the money. But see, then, then it always go back to you with the money. That's why when, when uh, Abraham was favored with God, he said to everybody, no man could have done this mm -hmm. for me. So in other words, you can, nobody can take no credit exactly. for it. You can't take no credit for favor because favor is another level from blessing because everybody named mama, you ain't got to be saved to be blessed because as long as you got blood running from your head to your toe, you blessed. Mm -hmm. So, so what God does is that he, he, he shows us different levels of his word to come to him because uh, one of the things you said about um, Sunday, Pastor, was being hungry. Mm -hmm. When you have a hungry and thirst for the word of God, that open the door for God you. God will fill you. He will based fill on you that based on that. Sure. And and as long as you are serving a man of God or want to serve the church and want to want to be obedient to the word of God, he will start fulfilling that hunger inside you, where you would not be so needy as a person. You know, um, some people are so needy; they need so much attention. Um, they need somebody to fulfill. They need. They need. They need the accolades and well, you, all this. Let me say what I was going to say. You, you, you're hitting right on that. Uh, 
I said, uh, okay, we, uh, we understand we're living in a generation of entitlement, selfishness. A lot of people have a self-centered mindset. In other words, everything is about them. People are craving fame and recognition. And uh, we can see that through so many reality shows. Even you got a lot of Christians. I won't jump on that one. Reality shows because they're craving fame and recognition. Uh, the abuse of social media is a part of that craving. Now, I said, ain't nothing wrong with social media. I said the abuse of it, you know, is craving that fame and, 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 and recognition. And the sad thing is it's not just in the world, but somehow it has crept into the churches and even within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people's service is in, within the church is based on the two Ps, power and pay. Power and pay. Many won't faithfully serve unless they get some power and some pay. Or power, we can say a position, however you want to put it. Or pay. Now, the scriptures we read is, is another translation to that Philippians 2.5. Uh, says, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Now, once again, this is important because if Jesus humbled himself to serve, why can't we? You know, the thing about that I love so well about, about um, because people don't believe stuff unless it comes from the top. You know, you, you can't tell me nothing unless it comes from the pastor. Sure. You can't, not, you know, and then that just shows another level that people are not willing to serve. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, take, you can't take no word from anybody unless it comes from the pastor. Like, you know, especially you're on the usher board, you're on different commitments. And well, the pastor didn't tell me this. Wait, wait a minute now. You in this committee. Right. And under the committee leadership, based on the bylaws or whatever the, 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 the saying of the church, you, are, you, you, you have said that I want to be under your leadership. It's like sub-leaders leaders in sure. the church. Sure. But see, everybody want to go in the sub-leaders in the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to go to the, what the pastor said. The pastor said that. And so the thing about this that I love so well about Jesus is when in Matthew, the Matthew, the 20th chapter, when the pastor opened up Matthew 20th chapter, the 26th verse, when the, uh, 27th verse, uh, and he said, Yet it shall be not be so among you, but whoever desires to be a great among you, let him become a servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. The reason why I love it so much because it came from Jesus. Yeah. If it came from Matthew, Luke, John, that's his opinion. Mm -hmm. That's his opinion. See, we, we wouldn't take from nobody else, but law, it came from Jesus himself. Like, okay, he said it. So now you ain't got to go by nobody's opinion because he, he the head honcho. <laughs> and he told you that if you want to become a servant, you have to bow down. Because the thing about, and it's so funny to me because people all want the high or lazy and want to be all that, but they are not willing to serve, okay. neither do, uh, but they want somebody to serve them. See, the, the higher you go up, the more of a servant you are. See, that, that's how this works. And that's why I said earlier, you, you, we have a generation of people with that sense of entitlement and just want to, as, as you always say, miss steps, miss the steps before they get to leadership, and it don't work like that. You and, know. And, and what you, and this, is my, this is my term of, of speaking. I always say you wind up being a prostitute in the church. A prostitute is only go to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. And that's where you got a lot of people hopping from church to church. And, and especially when people just start in a church. And I'm not going against anybody that's just starting a church. But they would do, what they would do is they will um, come to people that they know that are weak in the church and say, if you come to my church, I'll make you a bishop. Mm -hmm. You come to my church, I'll make you the head cheerleader or head choir member or mm -hmm. head whatever because if you if you are just looking for to be the head of everything they will find you in the church sure, sure. and if i'm starting a church i'm been telling you i'm gonna make you the head of something mm -hmm. you oh mm -hmm. i've been in the church for 20 years nobody nobody even noticed me mm -hmm. but now i can preach the word of god he told me he promised me he made me, he made me gonna be the uh, the head of the of the of the wishy-wash club mm -hmm. The wishy wash sure, club, sure. I am the head. Lord, help me, Jesus. Then everybody got to follow me in the wishy wash club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the devil always seek those that are weak. Yeah. Now, you say, I ain't weak in the church. I ain't weak. But if, he, if somebody come to you 
And I have had people come to me and say, Pastor, somebody told me that if I don't use my gift, that I can go. I said, who told you that? Sure. Who told you that you are ready to go outside? Mm -hmm. See, this, this is where people feel that God is not using them and, and the church is holding you back. Mm -hmm. And that's the, one of the worst things I always hear, the church holding me back. I could be further along the way. Well, you know what? The church is not holding you back. Your man and woman of God know where you at. Right. And so you try, to, you try to go against it. It's just like a, a child going against their parent. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents said, no, you're not, you're not ready to go off to school to another city. You need to stay in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Well, you're just trying to hold me back. You know that in California over there, they got a butter school. No, they might have a butter school, but you better off right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, once again, it, it gets into whether you're young or old. When you have a heart of a servant, you're here to serve. I've been in positions over years where I knew what God has called me to do, but because the leader was over me, told me otherwise, I didn't budge. That never came out of me, you holding me back. Never. Because I knew my time would come. Mm -hmm. See, and also, too, the heart of a servant, you're not trying to rush for elevation. It, to, but you, you, but to be honest, you're trying to be down low. I, mean, I shouldn't have said down low. Low key. <laughs> Scratch that one out. Low key <laughs> is as much as possible. Where you just don't want to be seen. You because, know. Because once you once you up to that another level, we everybody looking at you. Absolutely. And if you're not ready to take the to take the pressure or responsibility of carrying others over, it ain't it ain't you shouldn't be rushing that area because if anything goes wrong, everybody looking at you. Yeah. They're yeah. not looking at everybody, they're looking at you. Yeah. They're looking at you like what? Well, did, are you not the leader? Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 like, it, like any other project in the church, whatever and stuff, and, and they don't call nobody at church. They only call pastor mm -hmm. because they look at him is, you know, even though he said, well, it, 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 it's not his fault if the roof fell down. But you know what? We're going to look at you. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at sure. you. And so everybody, everybody wants a position to, to be known and fame and all that stuff. But are you willing to have your integrity? grind mm -hmm. and that's one of the things about that I love about Joseph was he got his integrity grind he he he, he put us in a position that I'm not going to change who I am based on what others say I should do mm -hmm. I believe in what God promised me and you have to learn how to believe in what God promised you and not be moved by people pleasers yeah 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 because people please don't get you in trouble sure they they will move you from your position and then they're going to look at you and laugh when everybody talk about you. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, let Jesus be your example in humility. If Jesus humbled himself to serve, why can't we? Humility is an on-purpose act. Now, if you think about it, uh, who is Jesus? Jesus is the what? The Son of God, the Savior, the King of kings, Lord and Lord, and all of that. So it doesn't matter who we think we are. And this is where it gets into to pride and all that, who we think we're going to be. Jesus, the Son of God, the King of kings, Lord of the Lord, the Savior and all of that, if he humbled himself, then why can't we to serve? See, that's why we can never get caught up into to who we are, who, who, who you think you're going to be. You know, I'm, go, I'm going to be a, a prophet. A, 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 okay, fine, praise the Lord. But you're still a servant. You're still a servant. You know, I, t I, I joke with some of the guys sometimes, and I say my name on the sign. But you know what? <laughs> this is what comes with that. And that's okay. And I don't, I, I've never allowed that to restrict me from serving. Because the more, the more servant you are, it's not beneath me if I see paper on the floor and say, oh, the cleaning committee should have got it up. That's stupid. That's a lack of integrity, character, in your servanthood. Because I'm the pastor. If, if I see paper here, so let somebody else do it. So the moment that ever come out of your mouth, let somebody else do it, your heart is not a servant. It's not there. You say what you want. I ain't say you wasn't saved, I guess. But as far as the heart of a servant, it's not there. Mm -hmm. It is not and then, there. And then the thing about that being a servant is that everybody, not everybody, but some people call you a fool. Mm-hmm. 
because everybody measure based on what they see. And so, you know, just like um, 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 we have people in the church that they give our pastor money directly, give him money and stuff. And then, you know, because it could be a situation going on in their life. I don't know what could be going on in their life. And they will hand it over to because they trust in the man of God. And somebody said, you're a fool. You a fool for, 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 you know, okay, if you have a big event coming on and, and you part the event and then say, you a fool for handing your money over to the church. And you don't understand being a servant. If I don't do this, and this is how a servant thinks, if I don't do this, I'm going to be in lack. Because my servanthood is based on me making a need mm -hmm. that has to be to a need, fulfill need, a absolutely. need. And I'm going to be, it's a, holding on to the money is not going to make you great. Right. In other words, me letting go is going to let God know that I'm serious about my commitment to him and I'm not going to walk away. I mean, you know, this is how we got to be, you know, even though we've been in church all of our life, we've both been in church all of our life. And uh, we, 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 love, we love the word of God. We love um, the, the things God, but we was, we, but, but, but our lack of not knowing, holding on to money, kept us poor. Sure. Us not knowing that if we keep on holding on to what we got, we ain't no much greater than what we had before. And which means, in other words, in other words, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and love the Lord, but I'm missing out on the promises of God. Mm -hmm. It don't make no sense to be saved and, and, have, and, and, and love God and still missing out what God got for sure, me. Sure. You know, I would hate to be in church for years. And then it's something that owes to me, that belongs to me, and all I've been doing is just waiting on me to die to get what God got for me. Sure. sure. That don't make no sense me dying. I, what, what's the use of I might well die the time I got saved. Because I would got the benefit then. But see, when, when being a servant is that I'm serving under God and I'm waiting on instructions. Sure, sure. And when the instruction come, I'm willing to do the instruction. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying no, no, no. And God will give you instruction through a man. Now, if you have, now I always say, if you have a problem, just listen to your pastor. Don't worry. You ain't heard from God. That's true. And I know people think that, but that's true. You ain't if, heard if from you, God. If any, and this goes with any else, from the pulpit to the back door. If we have any issue listening to a man or woman of God as such, oh, I, that's just, man, I hear for God for myself. And, and when people say that, I say, well, what did he tell you? <laughs> you know, I talk to God myself. What did he tell you then? See, because God is not going to say anything outside of his word. And part of his order is the obedience of headship and leadership that he's put before you. And the thing about this is God will protect you Based on, if the, if the leader is crooked, if he's a liar, he's a stealer, he will, but your covering is protected yeah. by your obedience to that man and woman of God. And eventually God will deal with that person. Yeah. God will. I've seen that happen. God will deal with that person. You know, see, where you ain't got to work, hey, you, you obey, you will follow in the order of God, not knowing whatever, and that's that. And, and, and if it's any leader's wrong, God will deal with them. And see, the thing about, you know, as long, you know, me and the pastor are going to talk about the timing of everything. Timing is very important. And I know people that say, well, it's, it's my time to go and blah, blah. And I'm, not, I'm not knocking this and that from what they heard or whatever and stuff. But timing is very important. God give it a way of escape. And he give a way of an escape through different times. There is a door that's open for, for you to switch to whatever you're going to go to. But that timing is very important. And everybody don't understand the timing of God. People think that you can do whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. No, it don't work that right. way. Right. Timing is very important. Just like we're getting ready for Easter, we're getting ready for the Passover, we're getting ready for Disney. The timing is very important. No, you can't walk away whenever you feel like it. The timing, because the timing is the covering. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Who among us is greater than Jesus? Your service is connected to your fruit. As a Christian, your service is connected to your fruit as a Christian. Another important key to remember is to serve is an honor and a privilege. That's very important to remember. It is an honor and a privilege to serve. 
It is, you know, when we were serving under our, our man of God, there was your father. Oh, my God, we love serving our man of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I came here, I came to church one Sunday, one Saturday, Saturday one yeah. Saturday, and we saw our pastor on a ladder. He was changing the bug. And, you know, it was just a normal thing of doing, but that got me so upset. <laughs> I was so mad to see my pastor changing the bug. And I went to my leader. And, I, and you know, I just, I'm not as loud as I am <laughs> now, but I made it a point to say, tell me, Pastor, what do the deacons do? I went to my pastor because I want to know. I'm saying, like, okay, if you change the bug, give me a legal description of what the deacons do. Because the deacons are taking the fair of the church. Then I want to know uh, what is their affairs. I mean, I was just mad. I was, and the pastor said, Laura, leave my deacon alone. <laughs> and I said, because I'm thinking to myself, if you're doing the light, and I don't see no deacon around, I don't see nobody else doing nothing, what is their job? Because, see, once you know your job, then you stay in the boundaries of your job, and I expect you to do the boundaries of your job. Yeah. Don't tell me you're an artist, and I tell and you I, to draw. And you can't draw. And you can't draw. And you don't want to draw. Don't tell me that you're uh, that, that you, that you a singer. And, don't and you sing. can't sing. And can't sing. And don't want to sing. See, I, I, you know, once, once I know your job, I can hold you to we it. We have a right to expect it. We have that. the right to expect it. I have no problem with that because if you tell me something, I, I expect you to act on what you what I just said. Sure. Like I gotta, they gotta think. What you think about it? Ain't you not what you say you right. are? Because you now said you that. Be sorry. Some people do. I got to pray on it. No, you don't. You, no, you, don't. you, 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 you don't want to say you're the artist. You're the artist. You're the usher. You, the, you said, so ush. Nurse. Do what you said you are. Because, see, these self-made titles don't go far with me. Right. Because I will put you to a test. You know, if you said what you are, I'm going to say, okay, then do it then. Because it should be always available. Sure. It shouldn't be you have to you have to measure up to something. It should be already available because obviously you have accepted the title. I didn't accept the title. You accept the title. So if you accept the title, then I expect you to be on call whenever I ask you to do something. And then that's why I asked my pastor, what are the duties of a deacon? Because give me the legal right duties of a deacon, then I would not expect them to change the book. Then I expect the cleaning people to change the bug or whatever the people change the bug. But if I see my man of God doing something, that really, uh, that really sure, bothered sure. me. My, I mean, he had to really calm me down. And I said, man, I said, you'll never look like this ever again. And then me and my husband, we decided to start decorating the church. We, we, just, we just started, we did the bathroom, then we did the, the dining room. We just started, whatever, the man of God, whatever you need us to do, man of God, we'll do it for you. Because I don't want to ever see my pastor, because I understand the pastor job, is to minister to get me to another level, and his labor is in labor in the word of God. I understood that. I ain't, I ain't never thought that my pastor should come out here and, and rake the yard. You know, you know, this one of my pet peeve pastor. This is my pet peeve. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I guess you're getting it out after 25 years. Huh? No, I said this in Sunday I school. Know. I said this in Sunday school. I have a problem. You know, just like, just like right now, we're getting ready for the fashion show. I bought the clothes this year, Pastor. I bought the clothes this year so they didn't have to say, Pastor, I don't know what to wear because you got what to wear. But I have a problem when you ask me how to put the clothes on. <laughs> now, I got a problem with that because of the fact that I bought it. You should know how to put it on. And then I have a problem if I ask you to buy some shoes and that was not on your list. But I'm thinking to myself, you didn't buy nothing. And now you have a problem with the shoes? See, I, you know, <laughs> it, 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 this is one of my pet peeves. <laughs> now I just look at you and say, well, what are you here for? Yeah. If nobody could ask you to do nothing. Sure. Well, that's true. That, that is true. All right. So to serve is an honor and a privilege. We have to always remember that if you don't keep that as your foundation, you'll always be subject to falling into the spirit of pride. And we know pride leads to destruction. That's even why uh, Romans 12 and 3 says, For every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Now this word soberly 
uh, means self-controlled mind. In the Amplified Bible in Romans 12, 3, it says, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance. Oh, my God. I have people in the church that they indispensable. There's no indispensable. such thing. Indispensable. All of us, from me to you, can get replaced. No one is irreplaceable. And for you to think that, that's the highest level of pride. I, I love the fact that I love my Jesus so much. I love, I love Jesus. But one of the things that Jesus did when Judas died, Judas, Judas killed himself. And the, the key is God wanted to focus on 12. He wanted to focus on 12, which means that when Judas killed himself, then that's one less man. Jesus did not sit up there and moan over Judas. Oh, I guess we got 11. Oh, we got just nope. 11. We just got to pray about it. He said, replace him replace. right away. Replace him. He walked away, and not that, you know, not, he didn't walk away, but he felt whatever he said. But replace him right away. Don't leave no door open. See, this is where we don't, nobody don't understand, like, no, replace him. You mm -hmm. walked away. Replace him right away. Yeah. Because, see, what you do is you keep on showing the weakness when you leave a door open. If we start out with 12, we're going to have 12 again. 12 again. Mm -hmm. Don't reduce it to, okay, well, we just have 11. No, we're going to have 12. Exactly. Then we're going to have 12. Then we got to find somebody to fill this right here because this is what we're going to do. We're not going to leave a door open mm -hmm. for Satan to come in and take away that. And then you find somebody that has favor mm -hmm. over their life. You don't hang out with nobody that don't have no favor over their life. Because favor is an avenue that if they got favor, then favor will fall on me. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. So I want everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought to, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance. In other words, don't lie to yourself about the value of yourself. That is a true thing, Pastor. People think they're valuable. Yeah. Uh, you should never be the one to evaluate your own importance. Now, that's very key. You should never, you should not be, now, I understand, you know, have confidence. That's not what he's saying. But you should not be the one to evaluate your importance. You shouldn't be the one saying, mm, I know I'm important. No. You know, I know I'm faithful. No, that ain't your call. Somebody else has got to say that. You can't, you can't self-proclaim faithfulness. I know people do it all the time. I know I'm faithful. Oh, yeah, says who? You? When Pat, you don't want me to say nothing about that. <laughs> you don't want me to say nothing about that because people get, people, people, the, the best thing I say about people, I give a very good example. When you have a funeral and somebody died and they, they uh, whether they mother, father, sister, uncle, whoever said, they were faithful in the church. And the pastor looked at them and smiled sometimes. Uh, yeah. Because really they was not. They was a troublemaker in the church. Yeah. They stole oh, we, from the oh, church. Oh, we ain't seen them in a long time. Oh, we ain't time. seen them in a while. But they'll sweat out. They faithful. My mother, she's a faithful to the church. She went to church every Sunday. But every Sunday she so, came Since here. you brought it up now, now nobody get mad. <laughs> now there's, there's a reason. Whenever you see this in front of I know sometimes people do it because they don't really know. Whenever you see that they accepted Christ at an early age, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. That's it. That's it. No and, history. And, 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 and people get mad There's something about wrong that. with that. People get mad no about No history. That. Come on. I, I know that's striking. Under, I feel it in the universe audience with that. That, 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 that. that should be a documentary that they'd have to cut it short on the life of a Christian and not to be reduced to accept the Christ at an early age. And then you got a list on how, to, how much they love baseball and fishing and, and barbecuing. What an indictment. Being faithful is being a servant. Absolutely. You know, you know, coming to church is not being faithful. That's like showing up for a job. Mm -hmm. 
But being faithful, meaning that, you know what, I'm not just coming to, 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 to come to church. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to be a service yeah, for it, the it, church. It's in your heart. I, I, want, yeah. I want to do what, I want to help my church out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, me, me and, me and uh, one of the brothers was here early at the church, and I was looking around the church, and, I, and me and the men and the brothers are saying, everybody were rah, 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 the church. Oh, my God. This is getting done. But nobody would give a penny. They love that we're doing the work. But nobody, they want to, and really some people come in and look around and say, well, I'll come back when they get through. Mm -hmm. Then I can say, look at our church. But nobody want to give a helping hand. Nobody volunteering and saying, Pastor, did something happen? Do we need to come up here and clean up a little bit more? Do we need to do, do I mean, do, is anybody, is anything need to be done? Because I don't want to just come to church. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be just a church member. I want to help mm -hmm. the church. Because, see, the thing about helping my church is that I'm helping my church because my church is changing my life. Absolutely. Yeah. My church is doing something for me that I couldn't do for myself. They give me insight. They give me revelation. They give me knowledge. They let me know that I am appreciated, that I am loved, that I am well needed, that I'm in position. They are showing me something that no world could give to me. They're giving me something. And, and because, I, because they're giving me something, they're putting my life back together. I want to do yeah. something for my church. It, it's, almost like, and, and I'm, uh, it's almost like you owe but you don't, because owe no man but to love him. So now it ain't like you, you're so overwhelmed with gratitude, you can't help but to love. I thank God. My, this, my church has changed my life. There is nothing too big my church can ask of me. Because I was incomplete. I was yeah. unsatisfied. I was unfulfilled. I was unloved. I was, I was so confused. I didn't know nothing. And you think I'm going to sit back and say, you know what? I just come to church every Sunday. I just come to church every Sunday. Don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You can't come to me and say, I serve whatever stuff. I'm like, are you loco? Because you ain't <laughs> did nothing. You know, and, you know, and, and one of the things about um, um, I, when, when we first got started, you know, not started, but some people, some people want to be my armor bearer. They came to me. They want to be my armor bearer, Pastor. Oh, no. You didn't want to be my armor bearer. <laughs> I didn't let nobody be my armor bearer because it's rough to be my armor bearer. Because, you know, I don't want you to just look at me. Hold my Bible. I hold my own Bible. You know, I don't want you to, you know, guard me because then I'm thinking just being nosy. You just want to hear my conversation. You know, you have to, you have to be praying for me. Sure. You sure. have to be guarding over me in the sense of like, you know what? Don't, don't you, you cannot harm my leader. Mm -hmm. Anybody say anything about me, you should be, you should be saying, that's not my pastor. Mm -hmm. But not to hold my Bible and listen to my conversation to other people. Mm -hmm. That ain't no I'm a bear. Sure, sure. Sure. But that's another message. Uh, you know, praise the Lord. I got the greatest armor bearer this side. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, so when your heart is right, your service will be right. A good tree can only produce good fruit. If your heart is not right, your motives will be misplaced and your service will be tainted or contaminated. Your reasons to serve can never be for selfish gain. We all need to, from time to time, checklist our motives for why we do what we do. So that's from the pulpit to the back door. From time to time, we all need to do a checklist on why we do what we do. I've also said this in the past that if being seen or wanting to be recognized is part of your motivation to serve, then that's the reward you'll get. If, if part of your service is so that you can be recognized and to be seen, that's going to be your reward. And then also, too, Pastor, being, being a servant is teaching me how to trust. Mm -hmm. it, you know, everybody said they trust God, but trusting God is being obedient to God. And being obedient to God is I have to believe that God got my best interest at hand. Sure. Which believe God got my best interest in hand, that he would not stir me wrong. I have to trust, trust that I know that God is looking now. Because, see, what, when, you walk in, when you walk in this faith walk or walk in the walk of Christ, you don't know all the answers. Mm -hmm. You don't know, you know, you, you got the feeling to think that this is the best way. But, see, when I'm trusting God and God will, God will help me through that trust, when I'm afraid to go through the things, mm -hmm. God will teach me how to serve. 
Sure. And I need to learn how to sow, serve so I can learn how to trust. Absolutely. And it's gold hand in hand. Sure. And it takes time to learn how to trust. Mm -hmm. You don't trust nobody right away. It takes time. You have, to, you have to see in all seasons how to trust. Mm -hmm. All seasons. Do the good time and the bad time. When you don't feel like, when you feel like it, when, when you don't understand, I got to still trust what I don't mm -hmm. understand. And that, and that, see, what God does, he see the bigger picture where he know where some stuff needs to be burnt off your life. Sure. Sure. And you would not know you had some stuff still inside you until the instruction come. Mm -hmm. You know, Zenith used to do this, I could say because they closed down, but they used to have part of their uh, saying, the quality goes in before the name goes out. And, and as she was saying, that's what some of us need. See, before your name can go out, that quality need to go in. And that's some things that some of you ain't going to get there yet until some stuff get burned. I don't care how, how you try. You know, some stuff got to get burned out of you. And sure, and it does begin with tests and, and, and being uh, 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 fulfilling instructions that you were given. And that's what helps build that character and integrity and that quality before your name get out there. And everybody, and everybody, you'd you be amazed what you think you over. Mm. You over on something because you have not been tested in that area. But when you get tested in that area, you realize, wow, I'm still, I still got issue with this. Mm -hmm. And you cannot, you cannot be, you can't go to another position until you deal with this position Absolutely. right here. That's true. You can't get moved until you deal with what's going on right here. Mm -hmm. Because what you would do, you would spoil the rest. Mm -hmm. You would influence somebody else to think just like you. You would, you, would, you would dampen the progress that has been made over your life and hinder somebody else. You would hinder somebody else. And see, God said, listen here, don't, go, don't think about going anywhere else till we deal with this right yeah, here first. Yeah. And people think, it's time, you know, I'm, I'm tired of doing this. I want to do something else. No you, no, you don't need to go nowhere. Just stay right here. Remember, I think I talked about this some time ago. Faithfulness is doing what you were last told to do. Being found faithful is we can still see you doing what you were last told to do. You know, if you found faithful, you're still doing what you were last told to do. You know. Hmm. Uh, one more scripture and we, we're going to wrap this up. Let's go to Matthew, 6th chapter of Matthew, verse 16. I think I kind of said, uh, if being seen or wanting to be recognized as part of your motivation to serve, that alone is your reward. Pride will disqualify you from receiving a heavenly reward. And we'll get into rewards of the faithful maybe next week or so. But in the sixth chapter of Matthew, verse 16, uh, Jesus says, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. In other words, you know how you have some folk, nobody should really know you fasting unless for some reason it's a corporate fast or if they ask you to go, go out to dinner and you say, no, I'm going to fast. But nobody should know you fasting because you look like it. <laughs> They'd be like, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm on this fast. This is my third day. Yeah. See, nobody should know that. Nobody should know that. That you're well, looking all. <laughs> but it's the same thing about serving. Even though you might not like what, what, what your instruction is, the pastor, nobody should see you walking around with an attitude. Sure, sure. I mean, really, you have some people in church, don't like the instruction, don't like the, whoever told them the instruction, mm -hmm. and they let everybody know. They, 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 they be, I, I, be, we doing, we doing cookies, serving cookies that day. You got you you serve the cook, but you turn your head. <laughs> no, no smile. You're not happy. You just I I I'm here, but I don't want to be here. I'm doing it, but I don't really want to be doing this. I don't I, I really don't like you, but I'm here anyway. God told me to love you, but I don't like you at all. What what you know? See, so you know you you all laugh. I used to hear that for years, years and years. People that you know. I love you, but I don't like you. And, and, and people would be so mean with that. Like, you know, I'm just doing it because I love the Lord. And I just have, I don't want to be here, but God told me to stay here. See, something wrong with that. 
Something wrong with no joy in it. No, no, no. Ser- There's no servanthood in that. I don't want to be here, but God, he just got me here. Oh, my God, Something Pastor. You know that. what? Another thing. People up there, you know, when they act like they so Holy Spirit feel. But can't speak to nobody in church. I'm praying. Mm-hmm. I'm praying. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from God. Yeah. Oh. I, I, you know, we, we, we've seen that. You'd be up ministering and, and the person got looking their head down. Bible, the looking at their Bible. Here, here, I'm in Job. They in their Bible in Matthew. Because they hearing from God. Hearing from God or or they sitting there that speaking in tongues. That's so out of order and so out of whack. It, 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 it's, 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 so, it's such a, uh, uh, but you not, you know, every servant do not allow, do not, you know, um, you know, they had cup bearers um, in the Bible days where the, where the servant would drink the, drink the wine or drink the cup to make sure that the cup is not poisoned. Yeah. Yeah. I could have imagined it happening now, Pastor, but anyway, <laughs> but they would make sure that that was not, and the thing about this, they might not like it. But they did not show the continent mm-hmm. of not liking it, which means I'm going to protect my leader. Mm-hmm. And we have gotten so far off in protecting the leader, of protecting the church, of protecting the thing about God. You, it has gotten bad with everybody talking about the church now. That's what we got the reality shows about because, because now everybody wants to say we all look alike. No, we don't all look no, alike. No, no. That's just like saying all men cheat. Mm-hmm. Then, then, then that means that all the men cheat. Why get a man if he's going to cheat? Right. You know, if, if you want to get a woman, she's going to be faithful. Mm-hmm. You know, it just turns everything off. So that's not true. So, right, you know, the right. church should be seeing everybody alike. Exactly. That's not true. That's right. You should never let them come out your mouth, everybody alike. No, they're not true. Yeah. That's not true. Then if they say, oh, y'all lie, I'm part of that too. Mm-hmm. Oh, everybody still that, I'm part of that too. Everybody, everybody hypocrite, I'm part of that too. Right. So don't let that come out your mouth like, you know, everybody in church, they never hypocrite. Well, you part of the church. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, my job as a great servant of the Lord, Lord, teach me how to serve. Mm-hmm. And teach me how to be faithful to my, my, my leaders, to my church. Sure. Because Lord knows if I could have done this myself, I would never join a church. Mm-hmm. The, part of the reason why I joined a church, because I, was, I felt some inside me said, this is where I need to be. And knowing for me to get healed, yeah, for me absolutely. to get delivered, for me to be saved, for me to be whatever I need to be. Because I need something. I need something. And so then I need God to fulfill a lot of things in my life. And I can't do it myself because I've been on this earth for so many years and ain't got it done yet. So I don't have no problem with serving God. Sure, absolutely. We close with this. Once again, we open up with it. Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Hallelujah. Well, we'll pick it up next Wednesday. We're talking about the heart of the servant leading up to Holy Week and Resurrection Week and Resurrection Day and all of that. If Jesus served and we're Christ-like and we're to have the mind of Christ, we're supposed to serve also too. Praise you to the Lord. Well, this has been Better Life Lessons. We'll see you next time. Amen.